All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson. Coming at you tonight with a special fight preview. A lot earlier than I normally do fight previews, but you know, being that there's gonna be several of these in conjunction, I wanted to get them out as early as possible. Anyway, we're going to May 28th for, in, to Singapore for one championship and power. We're going to the one championship Adam Weight 52.2 kilogram World Grand Prix quarterfinals. First bout we're going to talk about is going to be Itsuki, strong heart fighter Hirata taking on Elise Little Savage Anderson. Very excited about this bout. Uh, nice to see Elise Anderson get recognized and get brought into a bigger promotion. And, you know, Itsuki Hirata is just very popular. Uh, you know, one of the fighters I see most often in mentions in my comments and see a lot of people talking about her all over social media. So this should make for a very exciting bout. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at the stats. The strong heart fighter Hirata coming in at 4-0. She most recently is coming off a win over Miku Nakamura via second round TKO a little over two months ago. And little Savage Anderson, however, hasn't fought in a year and eight months coming off a split decision win over Katie Saul in Invicta FC. Now, Anderson will be the elder fighter by five years, 26 to 21 for Hirata. Anderson, big height and reach advantage here. Five feet, five inch, 165 centimeters tall to Hirata's five feet, two inch, 157 centimeters tall. And that carries over to the reach as well. 66 inch, 168 centimeters for Anderson to Hirata's 62.6 inch, 159 centimeters reach for Harata. So those are your stats. Now let's break each of these fighters down one by one. Let's start with the one who seemingly is everyone's favorite in this tournament, or at least many people's favorite in this tournament. Let's talk about the strong heart fighter, Itsuki Harata. Now Harata is a specialist. She has a judo background and she uses it well. And when I say specialist, she loves the scarf hold. Okay, four pro fights, four finishes, all come in the scarf hold position. Two are by submission and two are by TKO using punches. So she gets her opponent to the ground, gets in that scarf hold, basically like a front headlock, but with the inside arm trapped between her legs. And she either gets the submission from there or pounds them out. I mean, just very specialized set of skills for Harata. Now, one downside is that her striking is limited. You know, she usually does just enough to get into the clinch to work on her judo takedowns, whether they're trips or whether they are uh, throws. Sometimes she'll even drop down for a double leg. Last Her last fight, she surprised me by going for a double leg. Now, one thing about Hirata, even though she's known for that scarf hold, she can get creative on the ground. I mean, I saw her do an inverted triangle to mount against um, Nyreen Crowley. So she will use other submissions, even if she doesn't, you know, finish with them. She'll use submissions or the threat of submissions to get better positions. Now, one thing that Harata's bringing in, unlike her opponent, is that she has the big show experience. Three of her four, four pro fights have been in one championship. So she's fought in front of big crowds. She's fought in front of no crowds with the COVID. Uh, she has that big show experience. So she's used to this. However, she can get a little frustrated in her fights. If things don't go her way immediately, she starts to show a little bit of frustration on her face. Now she will move on and do something, but if you can get her frustrated enough, it could be enough to throw her off of her game. Now, whereas before, Hirata seemed to be a, what they call a free fighter in Japan, meaning she is not tied down to one gym. Lately, she seems tied down to the Yamamoto Sports Academy and Team Crazy B. Uh, that's where I see her, on so, according to social media, it's where she seems to be training most often. And she seems to be hooked up now with um, Ursin Yamamoto, the son of Miyu Yamamoto and nephew of Kid Yamamoto. They seem to be a thing now, and that's 
she seems to be at Crazy Bee full time. So that actually could be a good thing for her. Crazy Bee hasn't been producing, you know, the best results lately. But compared to having going around at different gyms and getting a little bit here and a little bit there, you know, finding a home like that could work out really well for Harata. So that is Itsuki, the strong heart fighter Harata. Now, her opponent, Elise Little Savage Anderson, isn't as well known to a lot of people, particularly if you follow one championship a lot. If you don't follow, say, the U.S. scene, and particularly Invicta, you might not know about her. But let me tell you something. She is not to be slept on in this tournament, okay? Like I said, she is long and tall for this division. She is the tallest fighter in the tournament, in this World Grand Prix, and I believe she has the longest reach as well. That build could carry her a long way, and fighters aren't going to be as used to fighting someone as tall as and as long as she is, okay? Now, like her opponent, she prefers to go on the attack. Both of these fighters are very aggressive. You know, Harata's aggressive and Anderson is no different. Now, unlike Harata, who is a more judo style, Anderson prefers, the, you know, the classic wrestling style, double and single leg takedowns. Now, she is not afraid to get creative either because if you see her fight against um, Stephanie Alba, she won by flying triangle. Uh, Alba had her up against the cage in a clinch Anderson jumped up, wrapped her legs around, brought her Alba down, and finished closing up that triangle to choke her completely unconscious. And she's also very creative in that she goes, likes to go for a lot of standing back takes a lot. She went for them, I think, at least twice in her last fight against Katie Saul. Now, one thing that's working against Anderson is that she's inactive. You know, she's had one fight in the last one year, eight months. In that same amount of time, Harata has had three of her four pro bouts. Now, to make up for that, once she signed with one championship, she said, you know what, I'm going to be a full-time fighter. She got out of, the nursing, out of her nursing job. She's no longer a full-time nurse, got out of the COVID wing, moved to Florida to MMA Masters. So now she has a full-time fight camp, a full-time home. She's not moving around to different gyms for her fight camps anymore either. So that could really help her out. She is now considering herself to be a full-time fighter. She has no other job other than to go and train every day. So that's Elise Little Savage Anderson, and that's each of the fighters. Now let's talk about the fight. In this fight, I think distance is going to be key. Uh, both like to work up close and both like to strike to get to in close and close the distance. Um, now, if I, if I were Anderson, I think she uh, should use that reach and height to her advantage a little more in this fight than she usually does. Um, she's in against someone, she has a three inch reach advantage, uh, almost four inch, or excuse me, three inch height advantage, almost four inch reach advantage. I think she, she might wanna, you know, train to use that to her advantage and possibly keep it on the outside where Harata can't use her, her judo as much. Now, getting on top is going to be paramount for each of these fighters. Neither of them do their best work on the bottom. They do a lot of their best work on top. Um, they're going to want to get on top and then thereby negate what each opponent wants to do or you know what their opponent wants to do to them. Now Anderson, she has a bad habit of stalling out when she gets in guard. She gets in guard and just she doesn't throw enough volume, doesn't really work hard enough to pass the guard. She needs to be active on the ground. That's the way the scoring system works in one championship. It is not going to award stalling. It awards action. It awards um, attempts to finish. And Harata, on the other hand, she needs to stay calm. Uh, like I said, she can get a little bit frustrated sometimes if things don't immediately go her way. So she needs to stay calm and just immediately proceed to plan B if plan A doesn't work. Okay, so that's each fighter and plus, you know, some of the keys to victory for each of them as well. So now it's time to make a pick. 
And I gotta be honest, this is not an easy one. I like both of these fighters, and um, I think both of them bring in unique skills to this bout and unique attributes that make this bout very exciting. Um, and of course, you know, naturally, I have to put aside my biases because, well, if I like both of them, I don't want to see either fighter lose, and there has to be a winner and a loser in this fight. So, who did I pick? Well, for this one, I gotta go with the more active fighter more recently, Itsuki Hirata. You know, like I said, she's more active, she's not switching time zones for this fight, and she has that big show experience. Those are things that are going to carry her a long way. Anderson has legit skills, and I think that being able to train full time for this one is going to bring her a long way. It's my problem with Anderson in this is that she's just not active enough. I mean, Hirata has fought three times in the same amount of time that Anderson has had one fight. And that's with COVID in the way. Hirata still had three fights. So it's, it's just a lot easier for me to go with Itsuki Hirata. Now that's not counting Anderson out. She could definitely win. But for the purposes of this preview, I gotta go with Hirata either by submission or more likely, I think, by decision because Anderson is not easy to submit. Okay, so those are my thoughts. I'm going with Itsuki Hirata by uh, submission or most likely decision. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the fight in the comments down below. Who do you pick to win? Now, if you like the video, please give it a like. If, uh, you know what, if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMAC now, the most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.